Auntie Joan, she's the lady on the right, is close to the entrance of Fleet Walk Shopping Center, and has just bumped into well-known local drug dealer and heroin addict, Skater Parks. Last week, Skater broke into Auntie Joan's flat, and stole her purse. Skater, is taking part in a reality TV show called Drug Watch. It's a video diary about life in the center of Torquay. Auntie Joan, and her best friend Terry were watching the show, when the stolen purse, was caught on camera in Skater's home. I have a bone to pick with you my girl. I know it was you, who broke into my flat, in the dead of night, while Terry and I slept, and stole my dearly departed, late mother's purse, which had all my money in it. All you care about Skater, is feeding your drugs habit. People who are addicted to illegal drugs like you, know that Torquay Town Center is an oasis for them, so they steal, lie, and even offer their bodies to men, so they can get enough money together for a fix. It wasn't me who broke into your flat Auntie Joan. I wouldn't do that. I'm not on drugs anymore. Me and AJ are acting in that program, so people know what really goes on in Torquay, among all the people who are taking Class A drugs. I get £200 a week, to have that spy camera in my bed sit, but I have to give half of that to my landlady, Cordelia Palm Bay of Palmlets, because it's in her property. Oh please skater, don't insult the intelligence of a wise old woman, who has lived their whole life in the center of Torquay. If my best friend Terry were here now, she'd be wiping the floor with you, and lashing you with her sharp tongue. Admit your wrongdoing, because you have been caught red-handed. Every viewer, saw my purse, sat on your window ledge. AJ wasn't acting, he wouldn't know how to, he was passing you illegal drugs through the open window. Auntie Joan, I have just remembered. I can tell you how I came by that purse. This junkie came up to me on Abbey Road, and sold it to me for a tenner. I hadn't seen him before. He might be something to do with county lines. He said he needed to buy some food and was very hungry. I pointed him in the direction of Carter's. I still don't believe you skater. This is another case of where lies pour from your mouth. I think that you have lost all ability to know when you are telling a lie, or whether you are speaking God's own truth. Don't you realize? that you have forced me to live on tinned vegetables, until I get my pension again. That's all I had in my cupboard, when you stole from me. Frankly, I don't need any of this stress, especially at my time of life. I think I must dub you into Officer Lawrence. Officer Lawrence isn't working around here anymore Auntie Joan. More's the pity skater. At a time when we must stick together, residents are stealing from each other and fighting on social media sites. Dwayne is being held captive at Torquay Town Hall, until he reveals the whereabouts of Tracy Ireland's secret headquarters in Melville Hill. They want to stop her relentless campaign, for decent homes, and a healthy community. Serki Astama wants to close down the Russian news channel and his labor. Torbay Council wants to close down Tracy's broadcasts. Okay I admit it. I did steal your purse and spend your pension money Auntie Joan. I didn't take the money to buy drugs. I stopped using Class A and that was a long time ago. All I needed was some money to buy my son a birthday present. I'm only allowed to see him once a year, and that's with supervision, involving a social worker from Torbay's Children's Services. Well Skater. That's some effort towards an admission of truth. Small mercies and all that. I know full well, that you will have spent all my money by now, but I ask this one thing of you, please return my late mother's purse. Money can be replaced, but sentimental things can't. If you do that skater, a line will be drawn in the sand. Mind you, I can't be accountable for what Terry might do, or even say. She has never been a woman to be messed with, and she always sticks up for me, in dark times. Thank you Auntie Joan. I won't steal from you, ever again, I promise. Hang on, is that the sound of a ward councillor's carriage from the town hall that I can hear? I think it could be coming this way. 
Yes, I think you could be right skater. As a woman who has spent their whole life in Torquay, I would recognize that sound from a mile off. I overheard that our conservative member of parliament wants people living in a war zone to apply for jobs as seasonal workers, picking fruit and vegetables on local farms. This is so the Tories can protect their gentrified landowner friends, who since Brexit, have been struggling to find cheap labor to fill their job vacancies. The Conservatives have their eyes on the Ukrainians' Auntie Joan, not those of us living in the drugs war zone, known as Torquay Town Centre. Dwayne, what a wonderful surprise my love, you're a free man at last, I can't believe my eyes. It must have been horrible, being held captive in one of those dark, dank and dripping wet dungeons beneath Torquay Town Hall. What made Torbay Council release you? Surely, you didn't do a deal, and tell them where Tracy Ireland's headquarters are, here in the foothills of Melville Hill. Pretty Coffee appeared in my dungeon. I didn't even hear the guards unlock the door for her. I quickly discovered that she fancied me Auntie Joan. She leaned forward to kiss me on the neck. However, she recoiled when she smelled garlic on my breath. Domino's had recently delivered a takeaway to the guards, and one of them slid me a piece of garlic bread through the bars. Pretty recoiled, with blood-red eyes. She said, I can read your mind. It is true, you don't know where Tracy Island is. Oh Dwayne my love, you really don't know how lucky you are to have escaped. Thank God for a fresh slice of garlic bread. Pretty coffee, would have drained every bit of life from your mortal coil had she penetrated your juggler. No sooner had pretty coffee evaporated, than these three burly council officers entered my cell. They never spoke, but just grabbed me, one put a sack over me. A cord was then placed around my middle, which bound my arms. A strong guard carried me to the councillor's black carriage. They spurred the horses, and we left the town hall at speed. They stopped here, untied me, and then pushed me out of the back door without speaking a word. So, here I am, I'm a free man Auntie Joan, a free man. Where has Skater disappeared to? She fled, pretty damn quick Auntie Joan. She was mistaken in thinking that the councillor's carriage is out, busy rounding up people from this drugs war zone to force them into working as cheap labour on their wealthy friends' local farms. She didn't realise that the local MP is looking to get hold of people from Ukraine, not Torquay Town Centre.